So last time we were using the high low method to actually construct our cost function and we used the high and the low data point to actually figure out what our cost function is and find our linear equation for the data. So that was the high low method. And as you can see, the drawback is that we didn't use all of the data points. So when we created our cost function, it actually was slightly unreliable since we did not use all the, the historical data. But what we want to do is we want to use actually all of the data. And that's what we're going to do with the least squares method. Least squares is going to provide us with a way to actually use all the data to construct our cost function and our linear equation. So that is the least squares method. And the least squares actually, since it's using all the different data points, is it's going to create a more reliable cost function to actually project project costs since we're using all of the historical data points and on top of that or I should say in addition it's also going to provide us with something called the R squared value which is uh, the term is actually called the coefficient of determination but it shows in kind of layman's terms whether we're using the right cost driver to to project our total costs like for example if I wanted to determine the, the cost of beer I consumed, a good cost driver, one that is relevant, would actually be the number of beers. What would be irrelevant and actually unrelated is the number of chocolate bars consumed. So as you can see, this, this cost driver, the number of beers, is more correlated to the cost of beer and we would have a high R squared value. R squared value actually is between 0 and 1. The, the more correlated it is, the closer it is to 1, the less correlated it's closer to 0. So obviously our R squared value would be higher using this cost driver and it would give us an idea to use this one over chocolate bars, which makes sense. But anyways, I don't want to get too much into that. We'll get into that in the next tutorial. So let's cover how to actually calculate our cost function or construct our cost, cost function using a couple equations. So I'm going to bring up the stats that we're going to be using. So these are the stats and I should say that we are creating a cost function for maintenance costs once again and that total hours are the x variable and total costs are the y variable because of course the hours determine the total costs so the costs are the dependent they depend on the amount of hours so we have this equation here and it looks really complex but it I'll actually break it down and it, you, or this equation calculates our slope or our variable cost as those are interchangeable terms. And I'll go over them. So N stands for, of course, the number of data points we have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we got 12. So we'll throw in the 12 there. And it's not 24 because each, each X and Y is one data point. When you actually graph it, it'll be one point. So there's actually only 12 um, data statistics. As for this symbol right here, this is uh, the sigma symbol, and it stands for the sum of. So the sum of x times y. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 3700 by 37,000, and then add that to 1600 times 23,000 and then add that to 4100. So we're going to we're going to multiply these first and then sum all of them up. And I actually have the numbers here in front of me so that we save a bit of time. So this is actually going to be 1.19568 1 exponent 9. And in case you don't know how to convert this to the actual number, you just take 
nine, five, six. And the nine means that we're moving it nine times to the right, the decimal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll have zeros there, and the decimal points will now be over here. So this is just an exponential form. So this will actually be, uh, we have a comma there, a comma there, so it's gonna be one, one, nine, five, six, hundred in case you just uh, wanted to know how to actually convert that to expanded form. So let's keep going on. Uh, we're going to subtract the sum of x. So sum of x is just we're adding up all of these values and that number is going to be 35,400 and the sum of y for the next one going to add up all of those, which is going to be 358,000. And then we're going to draw our division line and then use 12 as the number again. Uh, this is the sum of x squared, so we're going to square, or that's that's the y, so we're going to square this, this x term, 3700, and then we're going to add it to 1600 squared, add it to 4100 squared, and so on, and that will give us a number which is 1.245 exponent 8. And then we'll have subtract the sum of x, which is what we just did before, sum of x, which is 35,400 and then we square that. So make sure the square is on the outside. And when you actually simplify all of this, we're going to get 6.9506. And that is going to be our slope. So on our, on our cost function, right now it'll look like this, y equals 6.9506x plus the fixed cost portion. And then, of course, uh, the simple way to find out the, the, fixed, the fixed portion is to just take one of the data points. Let's, let's use this one right here. Uh, I actually kind of drew a line through it. So we're going to take this one, and we're going to say total cost is 37,000 equals, equals our variable was 6 point nine five oh six x plus f and then we're gonna sub in the thirty seven hundred right in there so it's gonna go in there and then we'll expand it thirty seven thousand I'm not actually sure what that is so I'm gonna calculate it really quickly six point nine five oh six times thirty seven hundred is twenty five thousand 717 and what was it 20 cents 22 cents plus f and then we just move this on to the other side by subtracting it from 37,000 and that's going to give us a value of 25717.22 so our fixed cost is actually going to be 11,200 and $82.78. So our cost function will be y is equal to 6.9506x plus 11,282.78. So our fixed cost is this portion right here and our, our variable cost is right here. So we'll have an initial fixed cost of $11,282 and then each additional hour will cost $6.95 approximately. And just so I can show you the, the other way in case uh, you want to do it the more complex way is you can use this equation to find out the, the fixed cost. And this is maybe uh, uh, you can use this in case you didn't figure out the slope first. And uh, the same kind of logic goes. This is the sum of all the y variables. 
Uh, the next one is each x being squared and then you sum them, so 3700 squared plus, 30, plus 1600 squared plus 4100 squared and so on minus sum of x which is sum of x uh, times sum of xy which was what we did 3700 times 37,000 plus 1600 times 23,000 plus 4100 times 3700 plus and so on uh, number is the same 12 uh, the, the sum of x squared so we'll square each of these like we did right up here exact same thing minus the sum of x so sum of all these again and then squared and that can give you your fixed cost so i've given you many different ways to find your cost function using the regression method normally you will use a graphing calculator so i think i've kind of made this tutorial already pretty long so i'm going to end it here and in the next one we'll be talking about how to interpret uh, i think regression data from a graphing calc so i'll see you guys in the next one if you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.